Hello everyone, this is Justin Stratton with the Davy Resource Group Software Development Team. And I wanted to share with you how we're using Resource Keeper for auditing, utility, vegetation management, work planning, and execution at Pepco Holdings. First, a little bit more about Resource Keeper. Our short-term purpose for this application is to be able to allow field users to be able to efficiently update pre-existing planned work on an iOS device. Our phase one goals is to be able to download data from MyRowKeeper and send those data updates back to MyRowKeeper, run on an iOS device even in a disconnected environment, process simple template edits against records. So by template edit, I mean imagine a crew foreman receiving a manifest of work through Resource Keeper, going out to do the work, and then just marking on the job that it has now been completed, and it updates the status to completion and the completed date to today's date. We could also use it, as Pepco is looking to use it, for the execution of auditing updates. So if you are auditing some planned work or executed work and you go out and you can review the records and then you can quickly apply an update to mark the job as a pass or fail. We did identify a need to be able to add new features and so the Resource Keeper application can add new features. It's not as robust as what Rover can do, but it is a good start. And then finally we wanted to be able to integrate with GP. Currently, our platforms are running Rover on Windows-based tablets and uploading and downloading information to my Rowkeeper. We have a field software side and we have our server software. The transition where we'll be for the next year or two will be running Resource Keeper as an alternative for our field software but it will still communicate to the MyRowKeeper system as well as the TreeKeeper 8 system that we utilize on municipal projects. But ultimately what our vision is for ResourceKeeper is one single application that runs the same, whether it be in the field or back at your office on a desktop computer using your web browser. So to get started, I just want to emphasize the seamlessness of Resource Keeper within our existing framework. Because right now we have mechanisms that send data to and from Rover systems, and Resource Keeper uses the exact same mechanism. So you go into the data transfer utilities, you can add features to your queue, you can choose by like a particular circuit or combination of uh, inventory date or change date, whatever. Once you build that subscription up and uh, add it to the particular user, then we can see here my particular user is set up to receive every feature on Maryland 2256 and for these particular layers. And so when I go into Resource Keeper, it will automatically pull down only that information when I go to download data. Now on the Resource Keeper application, we have, um, remember it's built to run on iOS devices. So I have a simulator here with a iOS, um, looks like an iPad. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the Davy Resource Keeper. And the first part of this process is I need to get my project. So if I go to get project and down and choose the project that I want to download. And then I can go ahead and enter my credentials and hit the download button. What this will do is Resource Keeper on my iPad is now reaching out to the server and pulling down the updated project information from the server. After the project has been acquired, um, the application will open and you can see it's very uh, map centric. And now I have the shell of the project, but I don't actually have any data yet. So in order to download the information from my Rover queue, I can go into the synchronization button and click sync all. I also have the choice to choose only particular layers if I wanted to, but if I hit sync all, 
what that'll do is that'll have the resource keeper application upload any data that it has to the server as well as download any information that is contained within my queue. Once it is finished downloading, we can see the features begin beginning to appear on the application. I can hit this button here to zoom to the best extent in order to see the data that I have downloaded. If I want to zoom into a particular area, I could just use the pinch gesture that on my iPad. And as you can see, as we get a little bit closer, the clustering turns off and I can see all the individual features as they exist. Now on the PHI system, these yellow triangles represent removals. And if I want to learn more about what is at that location, I can click on the feature on the map. I can then expand the uh, appropriate layer, so in this case, removal layer, and I can see the details for that particular uh, site. If I want to see the full details, I can click the details button and then it'll show me all the information about that particular site. If I needed to make a very quick edit to this record, a uh, common edit, I might change it from an, a PM work type to an RM work type, for example. I can do that from this form. And you can see it's updated in the callout box as well. If I close that particular feature, removing it from my clipboard, I can collapse that point down and we can review the information again. Or I can click on the next tree. Maybe this particular tree here is one that uh, we're going to fail on the audit and uh, we need to have it reworked. Well, if there's some common edits that we want to apply from this callout box, which we can define project to project, I can choose the edit that I want and click the apply rule. So my available edits here are that it needs replanned, that it needs reworked, or that maybe it was completely skipped. If I want to go ahead and apply the rework rule, I choose it, hit the apply button, and I have now made that edit. And you can see that the symbolization on the point changes. Instead of being a yellow triangle, now it is a red square. And I can move on to the next site and continue my auditing process, updating information as I, as I see needed by quickly applying a rule from this main page. If we go back and look at that record from previously, and I expand the QA audit tab, we can see now that it says accurate work performed, rework just as my rule stated. Rules can be set up uh, more complex in the sense that we could have a rule edit multiple fields at once. In this case, it's rather simplistic. It's just making that one change, but it is a change that's available from the callout box, reducing the amount of uh, clicks that an auditor would need to go through in order to update a record quickly. Another feature of Resource Keeper that I think our users will greatly appreciate is the ability to customize the styles or how the information is presented in the application. So if I click on the gear here, I have my map options, GPS options, as well as my style options. If I go into styles, I can choose the layer that I'm interested in styling on. And then we can see that there's different styles that can be applied. So I have a refusal style where if I click on that and look at it, I can see that if the permission status is complete refusal, then it will be a red X. If I go look at the audit plan fail, if the accurate work planned is missed, then it'll be a red triangle. And the rest of the styles are set the same way. Set up similarly. This is a set as a sift, which means that if a feature matches the first condition, that will be the style that it will apply. And if there's other features below that, or other conditions below that, assuming it failed, then it'll apply those instead. The other utility that we're able to use with Resource Keeper is GPS location. So I am on a simulator and so our friends at Apple when you use the simulator GPS locate it's gonna put me in I believe Palo Alto California 
but just so you can see how that works, I click the GPS. It says now it has been enabled with follow. I need to allow the application permission to use my location. And you can see that I am now located this little green star. So as far as the simulator is concerned, I am located here. But obviously in the real world, that little green star would be bouncing around near the features that I'm standing next to. And if I want to get out of uh, having that follow me enabled, I can, or that GPS enabled, I can just click the GPS button to disable it. It throws away the little green star. And then if I want to zoom back to where we were working, I can always hit that zoom to all features button. Thank everyone for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Resource Keeper. It's really exciting around here as we release this application in, on more and more projects. We feel that there's a nice little fit for it for the marking of completed work or simple auditing processes where we're just marking records as a pass fail very quickly with the additional ability to go in and fully edit the feature if necessary. Thank you so much, everyone. Please have a nice and safe day.